today we think about uh, value and wealth in terms of money. I think uh, wealth is what you have if you don't have any money anymore. So the data assets, the social data capital, that's the new wealth of the future. The industry is going through a major change comparable to you know, uh, the printing press. And part of that has to do with the younger generation that's coming. And they will expect to be empowered. And I think the DAG is a project that I think will gather to these needs. Everyone is beginning to realize how valuable personal data is. It's this new asset class. More recently, the focus has shifted to include all of the data that people generate as they live their lives and looking at how people can collect and manage that and get value from it. The new baby was just born now, maybe in 25 years from now. They will only talk about data and not cash anymore. The big aha moments in the research leading to the project was when we realized that if you could find a way where nodes in a grid could share any piece of digital asset with any other node in the grid in a secure, predictable, reliable manner, and that's where the whole digital asset grid project kicked off. We're living in a networked age, and the key thing about the, uh, what the DAG does is it effectively creates a map of where the data assets are and points people to those data assets. And so it's more like orchestrating the assembly of uh, assets from multiple different sources rather than creating a linear approach. We can't even envision yet what it will mean when like everything that we own is connected to the net through the Internet of Things. It's just this idea that instead of simply computers being on the internet or people being on the internet, we think of everything being on the internet. So a lot of the industry pundits were saying that banks need to become more like Apple. Well, that's really easy to say, but how do you become Apple if you don't have a platform? The digital asset grid is in fact two different things. It's a, a huge opportunity for banks and other institutions to start offering a whole series of new services which are in the data services space. The second element is an opportunity for SWIFT to provide the platform that is going to interconnect all those different applications and the clouds on which they are operating. This is enormous. There will be entire new businesses and industries that will now be able to run on that. And certain classes of industries, like the banks, will play this, this incredibly powerful new role. I think the digital asset grid is going to add an entirely new layer to what can be done you know, on the internet. What we're looking at is a reorganization of the economy around individuals achieving what they want in their lives and organizing their suppliers around them so that the individual becomes the new sun at the center of a, an economic universe. In the future, everyone and everything will be a publisher and a subscriber through an API. Then the DAG is built on the promise of having a subscriber to a set of APIs and a publisher of a set of APIs, and that's um, going to fundamentally change the industry and the web and the internet and our relationships with each other and other entities as, as much as or more than what the browser did. One of the things I like about the digital asset grid is that not only would say an investor have their own personal cloud uh, and somebody seeking investment would have their own personal cloud but the deal itself, the deal on the table has its own personal cloud and all the assets to do with that deal are securely held and authoritatively associated with that, with that deal in the, in the personal cloud. Like a bank today offers a secure deposit box where you can store, for example, your uh, precious jewels or bars of gold or whatever you want to store in that locker. What the bank is offering is a service, it's the locker, but they don't see what is in the locker. A digital asset locker would be something more intelligent. So the bank could offer the locker service and the user would be able, through that intelligent locker, to decide which pieces of data that are in that locker, which pieces they want to share with other parties in the ecosystem. We're bringing new data assets to market, which means that people can generate revenue from them and generate value from using those data assets. I thought um, Swift needed to do was stick to its knitting of being a supplier of infrastructure, but move from a messaging-based infrastructure to an API-based infrastructure. So in Slices of Life, we're showing three scenarios. One scenario showing a woman buying a motorcycle, a second scenario doing some investor matchmaking, and a third scenario with a newborn baby. 
In each of these scenarios, we show how the personal data around each of the people, and in some cases the objects, interact in the digital asset grid. What we hope in InnoTribe is that banks will have a major role to play in that domain in providing these safekeeping services to, uh, to us. Where we really are doing an extra effort as part of this project is to articulate the value proposition for the bank why they should do this. So to articulate it in, in ways that is quantifiable and not just fuzzy terms like ease of use, or uh, convenience. We want to be able to quantify those terms so that they can put a monetary amount against them and that they can make a business decision why they should do this. We've identified three main areas of opportunity for banks. Increased efficiency, cost savings around customer service, service delivery, around delivering existing financial services more effectively, and gaining new customers through doing that and through delivering brand new leapfrog services based on digital assets. The first value is in providing services on top of the digital asset grid infrastructure. The second value is to be able to use information and data that other data providers and data services are making available to the market. It's an opportunity for both SWIFT and the banks to reinvent themselves and make, them so, make sure that they continue to be relevant in the digital age. In the past 40 years, SWIFT has solved a problem of scale that originated from uh, the telex. There had so many telexes going on that it was not possible to deal with that in a manual way, so we needed an, a way to optimize that process. What the digital asset grid is targeting is a, is a different problem space. It's a different problem of scale. So we are talking in this new world about 10 million possible endpoints, about any sort of data, big data, fast data, real-time data, whatever, augmented data, all that will require a new type of, 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 uh, of technical implementation. And that's the, the kernel, the sort of basic operating system that we are building behind the digital asset grid to make that interoperability between those nodes uh, possible. It was clear that the mission of the DAG has, has been accomplished. And it was sort of opening the eyes of the banking community to how powerful B2B technologies might become. So everything that constituted the SWIFT and the core competence of SWIFT is taken over in, in this new environment like governance, like liabilities, like security, like identity, like setting the rules of the, of the game. And we are moving really from what we have today, a closed and trusted community, to this really fantastic open and trusted community of 10 million nodes on the grid. Some of the work that SWIFT is doing in this regard is, I think, remarkable. They're now leading, I think, a growing movement, which is returning the power of that monetization, at least in part, to the individual. That's a good thing for the individual, but it's also good for the web because the web only grows when innovation grows. In the same way that people trust that their money is gonna be moved from bank A to bank B, DAG can play that similar role where, you know, if your data is being sent to um, an entity that is part of the DAG, then you have this assurance that there's, you know, a standard that's being adhered to, and there's a level of security that's being adhered to, and it will remove that sort of wild, wild west um, element that we have with the internet today. I think it's very, very important to think uh, futuristic so that we don't get surprised. And it's a, it's a tribute really to the community and SWIFT that, uh, that actually the project exists.